In this video, I'm going to show you how we can recreate this award-winning intro animation in Webflow and a few things I learned while doing so. Let's get started. Hi friends, welcome back to Flux Academy, the best place to learn web design and Webflow. Here is Kabarza with another Webflow tutorial and today we are looking at this award-winning uh, website with this really cool intro animation and we are going to see how this was made and how I recreated in Webflow. So we are going to understand the animation first and then I'll show you a few other ways of also doing it and a few things I learned as I was uh, building this animation. So let's start with the approach and understanding the animation. Okay, so here we have a recording of that animation so we can see it frame per frame uh, to create, you know, the exact replicate of this. So you see what's happening here. First, we have the background that is stationary. It's like fixed and the mask is like coming from the bottom to top and it's going over the logo. That's important. That means the logo is behind the actual background image or video in this case. And then when the masks uh, completes its first stage of you know expanding from the bottom to top and also in its height then it expands all the way to the edges and then the content slides in so that's basically the uh, intro animation and this is the on page load animation that we want to create now let's have a look at uh, this figma setup that i created to understand the concept of this approach and this animation. So as you saw, the logo is behind everything. So it's even underneath the background and the background is the video or image. Uh, so you see that the image, we can change its height in Webflow with over, overflow hidden, uh, which I'll show you in a second. And then it can you know go over the logo and it feels like it's masking over it. And then the actual mask or the actual window, um, we are creating this using four different div blocks. In this case, I'm using different colors just to show them to you. And you see at the beginning, they can be all closed. You know, one of them be at 100 VH. We'll see it in a second, but then, you know, this one can opens up. And then at the same time, the background opens up too. This one can grow from zero to something like 20%. So it can create this kind of like window moving over the actual background and exposing it. And then everything can, you know, move to the sides, uh, zero width or zero height, and then reveal the whole uh, content. So this is our approach and it's important to understand how we are trying to do it. And it's much easier. I find it much easier to explain it here in uh, Figma with using blocks that we can move uh, simply here. Now that we understand it, let's move to Webflow and see the animation in action. All right, so now we are inside of Webflow. Let's play the animation one more time. After the animation finishes, uh, I want to show you we also have this on scroll animation that we will talk about later but first let's try to understand how the onload animation uh, is working so here we have the hero wrap so this is what we are basically animating and inside of it we have this main background image cover set to 100 view w 100 vh and overflow hidden it's also important to be uh, for it to be position absolute and positioned zero percent zero pixels basically from the bottom i'll show you why is it so uh, but first the image inside of it too it's also basically the same and let's take the cover and let me show you why this is uh, this has to be zero pixels from the bottom because we are actually animating everything from the bottom so by doing so we will make sure that the animation will happen from the bottom if we change this to uh, something like auto and if I change the if we try to animate it by changing its height you see it starts from the um, center and this is obviously not what we want so let's change this back so this is for the background image and you know its cover then we have the intro logo and the intro logo is just simply the logo that will be 
shown for just a few seconds, uh, maybe just one second, and then the uh, background image goes over it. So uh, the intro logo, it's important that it's positioned uh, relative and Z index of one. And then the image cover is on top of that with the Z index of two. And then finally, we have these four div blocks with the Z index of three, all positioned absolute, uh, all, you know, according to their, you know, what where they should be. So the top one is, you know, absolute on top. And we are actually animating these simply by also changing their height and with uh, depending on you know which side we are animating so these are the elements and now let's look at the animation itself so we have it on page trigger so when the page finishes loading we have this hero intro to happen and here you see we have quite a long list of everything but don't worry we'll go through the important ones and then i'll tell you what the others are so the important ones are the you know the four blocks that we have and also the intro logo and the uh, image cover so for example the image cover at the beginning is at zero vh so that's why we have these uh, essential states so at the essential state we basically have this uh, top block that is taking 20 vh and then the bottom block that is zero VH and these are important and the image itself is also zero VH. So right now with that, we are only seeing basically the hero wrap background. So when we start the animation, what happens first? First, we are taking the intro logo. We are changing its scale and opacity, just like the original website. We are bringing this to light just for, you know, a split second. But then as we are doing that, we are with a slight delay, you see point, um, you see 0 0.3 seconds later, we start the main, you know, background animation. So we are changing that its height from zero to hundred percent. So we are moving it all the way up. We don't see it all the way up because of the top block. So we are just actually blocking it there. And then the bottom block is following that. So it's creating that, you know, window moving effect. It's not a window moving. It's just the bottom uh, block just following that animation. So you also see it in the first stage that the bottom one follows. And then the next stage of the animation is quite simple. We are taking all of these four blocks and one by one, we are changing their height and width to zero and that's basically it the rest of the animations are for the small details that come later for example this line animating in the text the content and uh, the logo things like this they animate in right after so the main animation is basically these um, that you saw so this is the page load animation. And as you saw, there is nothing like too complex about it. It's just understanding the masking, but it gets a little bit more complex, not too much, but here's the thing. We want to continue the animation after the hero, um, you know, intro animation happens. Then we continue by, you know, a scroll animation. And here's a slight conflict. We actually animated this in from the bottom to you know move it from bottom to top and then the line from one side to other another but now we are animating it from the uh, other direction so as you see right now the line comes from left to right right but then as we scroll it animates from the opposite uh, direction and the way we are controlling from which direction we are animating this is from here so let me show you this first so we have two hero lines and we are setting the margin of one side to be auto so by doing that we are pushing that element to the other side so in this case we are pushing it to the left side so the left side is zero so it will basically stick to the left side 
and then as we change its size its uh, width it's starting from that left side all the way to the opposite direction and now you see we also have another line that's basically the opposite of the uh, previous one and you probably already know the trick as we are you know loading the page and as we finishes the animation at the end so we animate everything in including the line you see the line comes from left to right uh, from left to right but then we have the other line with a different class with a combo class and we are basically switching them when i say switching them we are setting one of them to be op opacity zero and the other one to opacity 100 all in one sec in zero second with zero delay so it's basically just switching the lines and now i can tell you about the hero wrap on scroll animation so we have this element trigger while scrolling in view while the hero wrap the hero section is scrolling in view in view we have this animation so the animation is happening from zero to 30 percent so that's representing the entire you know height of this hero wrap scrolling into view and here i also learned something interesting so the problem here or like the slight conflict we have just like we had it with the line that you know animates from one side and then we have to animate it from the other side here with the lines we actually switch them we have two different elements but i didn't want to do it for all of these i didn't want to create you know duplicate elements for all of them and there is actually a solution to it uh, there is a nice way of doing it without conflicting the animation so the conflict here is we are moving an element in, a, in the previous animation to a place but then we want to continue moving it to a different place or like to the opposite place and these animations can uh, conflict with each other like the initial states won't be really clear for Webflow to understand which one you know happens after we don't have a sequence of animations when there are different animations so the workaround here is pretty simple use a different div block so here we have just a logo wrap and its entire purpose is just to you know animate what's inside of it in a different animation so in the on page load animation we're animating the logo in nav itself the element itself but for the while uh, version we are animating its parent so that way we are basically uh, animating two different elements and this way we are avoiding the conflict of animations and that's basically the same thing for these contents uh, we are just taking uh, their you know their parent i just put them in a div block and i'm animating basically two different elements uh, and here we can also preview the animation it's pretty simple it's basically just uh, moving changing size and uh, a little bit of opacity and that's basically it for this version of this animation all right so now let's have a recap of what we learned in this version of this animation and then i'll share uh, two different ideas with you in a second but first the recap we learned that we can recreate this animation by simply using div blocks and controlling them as if they were a window the original website is using clip path so that's basically animating svgs we'll get into that um, but we can do the same thing just by using div blocks uh, another like important learning here is where we uh, want to decide where we animate you know an item from so we are animating it from the bottom to top then we have to stick it to the bottom uh, one way of doing that as you saw is by using position absolute and zero pixel on the bottom side or you know using auto margins to push elements to one side another way would be uh, using flexbox and then using flex properties and align the children's to the left or right and using that you can also control where the animation is happening from another thing or i would say the most uh, important takeaway here is about the continuity we have with the animations 
after we are done with the animation of the hero we want to still be able to animate the elements as we scroll the section and for that as you saw we're using just simply other div blocks so one animation is using one div block and then the other animation is you know animating the element itself so they are not contradicting anymore so that's uh, also a nice takeaway now let's look at two other ways that I try to approach this animation and both of them were like much simpler but they didn't you know end up showing the same result so one of them uh, is using basically just three diff blocks it's just much much simpler but the animation is also much simpler so as you saw the animation happens from the center and it kind of like opens like the old TVs they would like uh, shut down it like opens from the opposite of that like opens from the center uh, and we don't have much control over that without um, messing around with the rest uh, I couldn't figure out a way to do it in this simple way but anyway let's have a look at the setup so we have the image background set to 100 VW and VH and then the mask is just an overflow hidden div block that has the image background in it so the image background is also by the way it's set on the background uh, and then the mask is simply sitting in the center and the way this uh, background mask is sitting in the center is by having its parent set to display flex center center so this is sitting in the center with you know some values and again on page load we have another animation it starts with zero and then it grows so we are just growing it and then we are like having it in two different stages so uh, having it initial state and then two different stages so first stage we just open it up and then the last stage we completely open it up um, but again this has its own limitation despite being really simple and didn't work really nicely on safari and lastly another way is if you know Lottie so if you know Lottie so this is uh, done by a friend of mine so just quickly something to show you you see we can actually create a very similar animation with Lottie you might probably need to figure out how the masking works or just simply use the images in the Lottie but this will be also an option if you have access to somebody who can uh, create Lottie animations in After Effects or if you can do it yourself this is a great way of you know trying to create the animation in this way what they have on their site is I would say it's, it's not Lottie but it's similar in the sense that it's an SVG that is being animated and Lottie's are also kind of like SVG's being animated in a different uh, way. All right, friends, this is it for this video. I hope you learned something new and valuable today. Please let me know in the comments below. I'll be there reading and answering your comments. And if you have any suggestions, just let me know. This is YouTube. Please make sure to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already. And if you want to learn Webflow, from the ground up all the way to advanced levels we have a new course new webflow course redesigned uh, i'll make sure to link it below uh, this video in the description just feel free to check that out till the next one thank you for watching and peace out